We're here today at Liberty Land Farms with the, the Harlan Grease family. We have Greg Grease and Rachel and Zach Kennecke. Um, they're going to go a little bit over how they started with robots and how they transitioned from 80 cows in a tie stall barn to 300 cows in a free stall with five robots. Rachel's going to tell us a little bit how the startup process went and how they made that transition from down the road to here. So a few years ago we kind of started talking about if we want to keep uh, dairy farming, what was our five-year, ten-year plan. Um, we knew we wanted to work with cows, but we wanted to have a little more flexibility to do some custom cropping um, and some other opportunities. So we looked into a freestyle barn, um, both parlor and robotics. Um, we decided to go the robotic route just because of cow comfort was a big driver. Um, really we believed in the let the cow be the cow. Um, so we've been extremely happy. We have collars on the cows like a lot of farms do um, that we let them tell us what they need um, and it gives us a lot of flexibility to provide for them but also be able to step out of the barn, let them be cows uh, and we can do some other things off on the side. Zach, everybody says when you go transition to robots that there's a three-day transition, a three-week transition, and a three-month transition. Would you agree with that? And then talk a little bit about what you experienced during those three different opportunities. I would say, yeah, I completely agree with that. The three, three first days were definitely the hardest with trying to get cows okay with going into the robots. It was, everything was new to them. So just getting them to kind of understand what's going on. Um, after three weeks, it was definitely well over majority of the animals were going in on their own. Um, at, so then at three months it was it was a lot more of animals were starting to calve in that had originally already been in the robot um, and it, it got a lot easier getting cows to start off better. Um, now we're finally getting animals that um, were, were in the robot and we're finally getting cows into their first new lactation in the barn um, and it, it's been a world of difference since the beginning. Greg, when you brought a bunch of cows in all at one time and now that we've been here eight months, I guess what's one thing you've learned that you weren't expecting at that time? I guess one thing that uh, we're tr you know going to need to work through is that we bought about 50 cows that were about 40 to 60 days fresh and uh, so you're breeding quite a few uh, at the same time and then some of the herds that we bought we were, had to do a little catch-up breeding on them so now we're ha we have a big uh, dry cow group now so I guess one challenge is trying to work through uh, a little more dry cows I guess than I expected at one time but uh, we'll we'll work through it and uh, get them all through. Rachel, overall, I mean, have you happy with the experience, with what you've done, what's gone well? Uh, I would say for all of us, yes. Um, it is what we expected. We talked to a lot of farms before we uh, made this decision. Um, we're down to two fetches a day, which we have been for months now. Um, if we get about four to five cows per robot, um, that's where we're at. And we're hoping into the new year, like Zach said, once we are calving in everybody again, um, we're hoping to see that decrease even more. So. One of the last things is, what would you recommend that somebody who is considering doing robots, um, still on the fence about it, what would be one of your big pointers to say, hey, you need to do this before you actually sign on the line? I would say we talk to a lot of people who have robots, um, and I would encourage that. But I'd also encourage to go and actually go while a farm is doing chores. Um, you know, we're in the barn a lot, and it's not putting robots, and you can kind of be more hands off, but we're a lot more hands-on in different ways than we were in the past. So I would recommend you uh, go and actually see a farm, um, see them do chores, what it entails, um, and then you can really get a good feel for it. I would say tour as many facilities as you possibly can. Um, it was every single farm that we went and looked at, there was something that we loved and wanted in our setup that they had. And I guess experience, the more you get to experience, the better decisions you can make on it on what you want where in your own facility and what's going to work better for you. And another thing I think that would be really helpful is is just touring farms in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be a robot farm. Uh, 
there's still uh, things that in a parlor farm comp- as well as a robot farm you still uh, stalls cow comfort uh, bedding uh, some feeding options or feed pushers or different things like that that w- are in parlor barns as well as uh, robot barns that you still can learn a lot from uh, touring you know different farms and you can you can gain a lot by just asking questions and I a lot of farms that we toured were very helpful in what they would do different and what they really like that they recommend so that's that's another thing to do is make sure to ask questions and take time take time to get out and tour